Hey everybody, welcome back to the Revelation Bible Study. My name is David Kenny, and I'm the pastor of Walden Community Church here in Montgomery, Texas, and we are going through the entire book of Revelation together here on YouTube. We are in Revelation chapter 20. That means only two more chapters to go. Can't believe it. We've got Revelation 21 coming after this, chapter 22 after that, and then we are finished. So the home stretch is in sight. That's pretty incredible. And uh, it's just amazing that we've read this far, right? And so I hope that this has been enjoyable for you. And if it has, of course, you know, give these videos a like, subscribe to our channel, make sure that you tell other people about the study that you've been watching or post a couple of your favorite videos to your Facebook wall so other people can see it too. You're more than welcome to jump in uh, to Revelation 20. We're up to verse 7 right now. We covered 1 through 6 uh, yesterday. And so now, in your Bibles, it might say at the top, the defeat of Satan. We talked about last time that Satan was bound with a chain. He was thrown into a pit for a thousand years. Now, I'll, I'll repeat this again. Um, the way we've approached this study in Revelation is as a literal study. There's more than one way to interpret Revelation, and certainly everyone has their favorite ways. Um, I'm choosing to do this literally. So that everything that we see on the page, we're just assuming this is straight across literal, right? When it says a thousand years, we, we just say, okay, it's a thousand years, okay? Some people, of course, will try to read into numbers and study numerology, or we'll talk about uh, symbolism and how this represents this. There's no right or wrong, okay? And, and so rather than confuse us with multiple ways of reading this, I just thought, Approaching this as a literal text is probably the best. So, last time we were together, we said, after a thousand years, Satan is released from the pit. We've had a thousand years on earth with Jesus Christ as king, as ruler of the earth. A thousand years with no devil, right? No Satan influence on the earth. Must have been wonderful, right? Heaven on earth. Let's see what happens. Verse 7. And when the thousand years are ended... Satan will be released from his prison and will come out to deceive the nations that are the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them for battle. Their number is like the sand of the sea. Can you believe it? Satan gets out after being gone a thousand years and he is still powerful enough to rally an army from the earth of, of people that will now rebel against God and their numbers exceed the sands of the sea. That even without Satan's influence on the earth, and with Jesus being king on the earth, there is still now, a thousand years later, enough dissension and enough sin in the world that Satan is able to rally an army. Verse 9 says, They march up over the broad plain of the earth and surround the camp of the saints and the beloved city. But fire came down from heaven and consumed them. So, no battle. <laughs> And the devil who had deceived them was thrown into the lake of fire and sulfur where the beast and the false prophet were, and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. So, just to recap, <laughs> even after a thousand years of Jesus' reign on earth and no Satan on the earth, nothing changes. The world doesn't change. A thousand years is a long time, right? People uh, around the earth as we tend to do, we begin to fall into routine, just like we always do. And years pass, and like I said last time, you know, Jesus is here physically on earth, so he, that means he's only going to be in one space and one place at a time. The earth is a big place. I'm sure even in a thousand years, there'll be plenty of people who never see Jesus face to face. And what happens in all that time is what people thought even back then when Jesus was here. He's just a man. He's just a prophet, right? He's just a teacher. Eventually, over time, people start to doubt and lose faith. And they just think, well, he's just another king like all the other kings. He's just another president like all the other presidents. And this deception ends up working for Satan so that when he returns, Satan's able to rally an army and Revelation just calls that army Gog and Magog. There's no, there's nothing hidden or secret there. There's nothing to uncover. And, and you know, the, reading this chapter just makes me think about all the excuses. 
that you hear from people, especially from atheists. You know, they say, like, why is there, you know, if God is real, why is there so much evil in the world? Really? Because even without Satan on the earth, even with Jesus reigning, evil still rears its ugly head. Why is there evil in the world? Because I'm in the world. Right? Why is there evil in the world? Because there's people. All by ourselves, we can create evil. Look at verse uh, 9 and 10. So the army, right, it goes to war, tries to go to war, and Jesus just brings down fire from heaven and just engulfs them and says, nope, you know, nice try. <laughs> you know, yeah, I'm really afraid of your whole army. Zap, right, gone. And then in hell forever. So let's, let's just rule out the whole idea that hell is not eternal, right? Tormented day and night forever and ever. People are going to always misinterpret who Jesus is, even when Jesus is here on the planet. They didn't recognize him when he was here the first time. So even after he comes down from the sky on a white horse with a loud trumpet call, people will still doubt. And they will still turn away. And they will still lose faith. It's crazy. And the other thing that made me think about is not just the atheist argument, right? Because there is, there's the atheist argument. They say, you know, well, what if, you know, you know, if, if only this were, you know, if only this would happen, then I would believe, right? If only Jesus would show himself to us, then I would believe. All right, here's a thousand years of Jesus on earth and people still don't believe. If only evil was removed from the world, then I would believe. You know, if only we lived in a better world. Okay, here's a thousand years without the devil and people still don't believe. It just goes to show you that environment has nothing to do with it. Right? And it's almost disheartening because as parents or as grandparents or aunts and uncles, you know, we try to create the perfect environment for our children. You know, that's been the thing ever since I can remember. Parents always trying to create the perfect environment for their kids, trying to shelter them from bad things. Oh, we don't swear. Oh, we don't watch movies with swearing. We don't watch movies that are rated R. Oh, we don't do this or we don't do that, right? We don't drink or we don't smoke. You know, we don't, we don't do this. We don't do that. We only read these books. Or we don't wear our, we don't wear our, our girls uh, wear pants. So we don't, you know, we, we, we don't cut our hair a certain length. You know, we don't let our kids wear makeup until they're 16. We don't let our kids date until they're 18. We do all these things to try to shelter our children. You can't. You can't. There is nothing you can do to shelter your child from sin. Even in a perfect world of a thousand years with no devil and Jesus reigning as king on earth, Satan is still able to rally an army of enough people that they outnumber the sand and the sea. That people would still find a reason to go to war against God. We, we don't need better environments. That is not what our children need. Our grandchildren do not need better environments. Our nieces and nephews do not need better environments. They need the Holy Spirit. We should stop trying to shelter our children from the world and we should prepare them for it. You know, King Saul, when he sent David out to fight Goliath, he tried to shelter him with armor and said, here, this armor will protect you. David said, no, this armor slows me down. David says, I don't need armor. I need weapons. I think our children and grandchildren need weapons more they need the strength and the power of the Holy Spirit in their life. That's what they need. They need a personal relationship with Jesus. That's what they need. They don't need to be sheltered. Verse 11 says, Then I saw a great white throne, and him who was seated on it. From his presence, earth and sky fled away, and no place was found for them. So, at the end now, we have the throne of God and nothing else. Everything else is gone. The earth, the universe destroyed. All we have is the throne, and that's it. And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne, and books were opened. And then another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged by what was written in the books, according to what they had done. And the sea gave up the dead and who were in it. 
Death and Hades gave up the dead and who were in them, and they were judged, each one of them, according to what they had done. Then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death, the lake of fire. And if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. So again, we're going to read this and translate it literally, okay? This is the final judgment. This is the great white throne. This is the end of end, okay? And again, just like last week, I said, you know, where are we? Where, where are you and I? We're, we're not here. You and I, are. we're in heaven. We will not stand before the throne, okay? We are not judged because we were, we were a part of the very first resurrection. Verse 11 says, the earth and sky are gone, and there's only the throne. And it's simple. Judgment is simple. Your name's either in the book or it's not. If it's in the book, you go to heaven. If it's not in the book, lake of fire. That's it. That's all there, that's all there is. Books are opened. Your sins are revealed to you. And those who do not have the cross to protect them, lake of fire. That's it. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. If the wages of sin is death, this is, this is it. The second death. The lake of fire. Hell forever and ever. The Bible says that when you become a Christian, God remembers your sin no more. Right? When you become a Christian, your sin is erased. The cross protects you. and Your sin is gone. But non-believers, their sins are still recorded. Their sins are not forgotten. Their sins are recorded in these books. And, you know, people say, oh, when I get to heaven, when I get to heaven, I'll plead my case with God and I'll, I'll, I'll show God how good I was. I'll show God how much I did. God will understand. It doesn't say anything about heaven. What do you mean when you get to heaven? You, you don't get to go to heaven. No, nobody gets to go to heaven. The only thing that, that is here is judgment and the throne. And that's it. These people are not in heaven. They don't step, a, they don't step foot in heaven. There is your first death, the, the death you die on the earth. And then you are resurrected at, before judgment. Then you stand before the great white throne. And then second death, you are thrown into a literal lake of fire. You know, we always memorize John 3.16. Uh, again, something we teach children, right? We teach them John 3.16 to memorize it. But we, we fail to teach people John 3.18. We, we fail to make John 3.18 just as important and just as popular. John 3.18 says, Whoever believes in him is not condemned. But whoever does not believe is condemned already. Which means you don't have a case. You don't have an argument. If you do not believe... You are already condemned. And it says, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. There's no other name. No other name under heaven or hell by which people can be saved. John 3.36 Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. Whoever does not obey the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God remains on him. John 3.16, nice, bubbly, friendly. We love that verse. John 3.18, if you don't believe, you're going to hell. John 3.36, if you don't believe, you're going to hell. There's no way around it. You can't reject the Son and still claim eternal life. It's impossible. Well, you can say, well, what about all those other religions? What about other people? They pray to God, right? What about other branches of Judaism or other branches of Christianity like Mormonism or Jehovah's Witnesses? The Bible is clear. The Bible is clear. It's either Jesus is God and he is to be worshipped as God, not a subordinate, not a lesser than, not a brother to or a cousin to or akin to. Jesus is, Jesus is either worshipped as God, believed to be God, accepted as God, or lake of fire. That's it. There's nothing to read into. There's no plan B. There's no alternate ending. This is why it's important. This is why Revelation is important. Because it gives you a glimpse of the ending. We know how it ends. We know what's going to happen. So we either spend our time now developing a relationship with Jesus Christ or we don't even, I don't even want to talk about or. 
right? <laughs> Don't even want to talk about or. As parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, it's our job to express the urgency in creating intelligent people who understand the weight of this. If we send emails or cards or letters to our relatives, it should be about Christ and Christ alone. Nothing else matters. I love you guys. I'll see you next time. Bye.